Assalamu alaikum and welcome to today's Sufi teachings. This Sufi teaching series we call Community Connection occurs on the first Sunday of every month at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. It is organized and underwritten by Sufi Center Minnesota with the intention of making the Sufi teachings of peace, love, mercy, justice, freedom, and beauty available to people everywhere. We acknowledge that the land Sufi Center is located on is the traditional and ancestral homeland of the Dakota and Midwakanton tribes. Sufi Center Minnesota recognizes and respects the enduring relationship that exists between many indigenous peoples and their traditional homelands. We're excited and grateful to have Muhammad Walid with us today. Muhammad Walid, PhD, was born in Alexandria, Egypt, in the cradle and first school of the Shadli Tarakat, from which its rays spread to the rest of the world. A humble student of Sufism since 1992, he joined the foundation course held by the Institute of Spiritual Healing in 2019, then realized that these teachings, joining the healing and the walking in a personal manner was exactly what he had been looking for. He is currently a level two student at the University of Sufism. His teaching today is the meeting of the pole, Sidi Abdul Salam Ibn Mashish. Brother Walid, welcome, and thank you for being with us today. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. All praise is due to Allah Almighty. All glorification, all gratitude, all knowledge coming from Allah. All mercy and compassion coming from Allah. May Allah bestow his healing, lights, and blessings upon us all. And I hereby witness that there is no God but Allah, and that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger. Alhamdulillah, I'm so grateful for being here with you. So grateful that uh, I'm giving this wonderful opportunity to join this uh, special Sufi school founded by Sidi Muhammad Saeed al Jamal. May Allah be pleased with him and increase his bounties, multiply his lights. And so grateful uh, for joining the teacher training class held and organized by uh, uh, Minnesota Sufi, uh, Sufi Center, Minnesota. And being a student of uh, Dr. Kamila Shanman in this uh, course as a facilitator, and uh, definitely being a student of uh, Dr. Ibrahim Jaffe and uh, Moshida Salima, and being a student of everyone here. Um, you student. I'm not here to teach, actually. I'm here to learn more and more. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, excuse me for this introduction, long one, but let's start with the Fatiha and the elongation of the name, inshallah. Please drop in your hearts, ask Allah Almighty to get a light with his lights. Further open your hearts. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ar Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Malik yawmiki. Iyaka na'abud wa iyaka nasta'id. Iyaka na'abud wa iyaka nasta'id. Iyaka na'abud wa iyaka nasta'id. Ihidina s-sat al-mustaqid. Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhi. Ghayr al-maghdubi alayhi wa Allah. 
محمد رسول الله عليه صلاة الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله إبراهيم رسول الله عليه صلاة الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله موسى رسول الله عليه صلاة لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله عيسى رسول الله عليه صلاة الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله عليهم صلاة الله وعلى آله وأزواجه وأصحابه وأحبابه وأتباعه بإحسان إلى يوم I'll uh, inshallah start Ooh. I'll start with the presentation uh, that uh, I prepared. I think do shave screen, inshallah. Yes, the one. Is it shown for everybody? Yes, it is. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, today's lecture is about Sidi Abdul Salam ibn Rashid and Sidi Abul Hassan al Shazuli, the making of the book. Uh, I'm so, so honored, alhamdulillah, to talk about a very special wali, friend of Allah, to whom the full depths and comprehension of cannot be expressed in words or grasped by the faculties of the intellect. He was a master of masters. Actually, uh, I split the demonstration and presentation into two parts with two backgrounds. One is taking directly from the words of Sidi Muhammad Sa'id al Jamal, beloved Sidi. And then another background which is lighter, whereby I uh, humbly introduced my own reflections upon what's happening. So I hope this doesn't confuse anyone. So now what I'm reading, I'm reading what Sidi wrote about Sidi Abdul Salam al Parashish. And uh, at the end of the presentation, you will find the reference for this. Now, Sidi Muhammad Sayyid al-Jamal is describing Sidi Abdul Salam ibn Bashish as he was a master of masters, a secret of secrets, a ghawth, or a helper for mankind, 
a beloved singled out specially from all mankind and creation of his era for the intimacy of his beloved Allah. His name as we know it today is Abdul Salam ibn Bashish. Some people say Bashish with B and some people say Mashish with M. Both are correct, inshallah. Blessed is the heart who carries love and respect for that person and some portion of its secrets within it. Uh, that's his bio, Sidi Abdul Salam ibn Mashish. His full name is Muhammad Abdul Salam ibn Mashish ibn Mansur ibn Ibrahim al Hassan al Idrisi al Sharif, which means he's a descendant of uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, from his grandson uh, Sidi al Hassan. And the family of Sidi al Hassan immigrated to Morocco, fleeing from wars and problems. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, the people of the house of the Prophet suffered from. So they, some of them flee to Morocco, and this is a descendant of uh, Imam al Hassan. His origin and nationality is Moroccan, and ethnicity, Sharif. Sharif means uh, descendant of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Arab. His tribe is Bani Arus of the Jabal Al Alam to the southeast of Tetuan in Morocco. And this is a photo of his uh, house and resting place on the top of this mountain. He lived out his life in utter seclusion on the top of the mountain of the Noor. Jabal, Jabal means the mountain Al Alam, uh, the Noor, or the mountain of knowledge, Jabal Al Ilm in the utmost northwest of the countryside of Morocco, at almost 1365 meter above sea level. It's very cold in winter and moderately weathered in summer. Now this is a video, a bird's eye video of the top of this mountain, whereby you can see this is his resting place, his seclusion place, and there is a tree uh, that grew vast, huge tree grew nearby. This is another video. A close up. And these are the students and followers of the Shazuli Tariqa and Mashishi Tariqa, by the way, reciting Wazifa and reciting. Uh, some zikr. And in all these people, because there was no electricity, people used to gift him with candles so that they make the his resting place illuminous for people to find light uh, for for to know uh, where is the place located and if they want uh, to stay at night, they find some form of light. Uh, this is a close up further close up of the uh, uh, his resting place from in zooming out And then this is the resting place and mosque attached to this resting place of Sidi Abul Hassan al Shazuli, the founder of Shazuli Tariqa, and this is in Humaysera, southeast of Egypt. I, alhamdulillah, I was gifted and blessed by two visits to Sidi Abul Hassan al Shazuli. I hope you all, and I hope we all get together there someday and to visit Sidi Abdul Salam al Mashish and Sidi Abul Hassan al Shazuli soon enough, inshallah. And now, Sidi Abdul Salam al Bashish, although he lived his entire life as a recluse from the world of everyday life, living in seclusion, he was well known to the folks of Allah for his deep piety, sincerity, and devotion to his Lord. It was he whom Allah the Almighty chose to be the only master of his time endowed with his perfect and complete knowledge, ma'rifah. He would later pass this knowledge to a successor, Sidi Abu al-Hassan al-Shazuli, who was to found the great school of the Shazuli Yahweh, which prevails in many parts of the world and especially in the West, and which is blessed by Allah to this day. Now, 
the reflections based upon what I read. Most of the folks of Allah, or friends of Allah, are hidden nowadays. They are hidden from creation. So we don't know actually who's a friend of Allah and who's not. And this is an invitation for us all to be very humble and modest, to be polite and non-judgmental to all human beings and all creation. Because we may be dealing with one of them without us even realizing it. They are not wearing anything special. They prefer to hide. They prefer not to show any speciality. So we will never know if he's a friend of Allah or not. So why don't we deal with every human being as something kind of uh, mirroring, say, saying things to us or doing things to us that can, if it's matching what Allah wants from us, then it might be an indirect way of guidance. Example, uh, walking on the sidewalk. Sometimes when we walk on the sidewalk and we are faced with somebody coming from a distance, would you prefer to stay on your path or you just give him space for him to walk and then you return back to the sidewalk yourself? Uh, if, if we look at this person as a friend of Allah, I think we would leave him to walk his walk and then we step back on the sidewalk again out of humbleness and modesty. The few, the few friends of Allah, only few, who are revealed and known, are revealed by the order of Allah. They don't want to be revealed. They want to stay in hiding. But sometimes Allah gives them orders and commands. It's after the stations of substance, substance by Allah, they are given the servanthood and guidance to creation. Wali means friend of Allah. Murshid means guide. So some, not all friends of Allah or folks of Allah are given the title guide. Only few. Uh, when Allah gives them the order. And this is not by themselves. They don't ask for it. If it's up to them, they will choose to remain hidden and stay in full presence with Allah Undisturbed by the creatures, undisturbed by any the nafs creature, the nafs of the creatures, the nafs of the human being, with all its darkness, with all its challenges and issues. If it's up to them, they want to stay in pure light with Allah Almighty. But it's it's an order; they cannot say no. Now they have ranks. The top of these ranks carries the title the Qutbs, uh, and usually there are four Qutbs. Uh, and on the higher rank, the top of the pyramid, it's, it's like a, a form of organization in, 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 in the folks of Allah. Yalm, there is an organization, there is like a management, there is a system. It's not random. No, it's very well structured and organized. It's a shape of a cone or a shape of a pyramid. And on the top of this pyramid, there are four corpses. And even above them, on a higher rank, on the top of the pyramid, there is one who attained perfection and completion. His title is Qutb al-Islam, uh, uh, Qutb is Paul, of course, Paul of Islam, or Paul of Zaman, as Zaman is a, the Paul of his time, and very rare to know the Qutb, meet him and learn from him, very, very rare. He, 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 he may not be given uh, a, 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 the order to be a guide, he just be the Qutb of, the, uh, of his time, but he doesn't necessarily guide people. Why? Because he's always in full presence with Allah Almighty. Always. 100%. Awake or asleep. He's always in full togetherness with Allah Almighty. And this requires very special students with certain level of purification. Purification and a purification. No darkness at all. No nafs at all. No personal attributes. Nothing personal. Beautification. Now they exchanged their attributes with complete attributes by walking. And not only this, they have to have a very high level of adair, politeness and manners, how to behave in the presence of Allah Almighty. So it is, it is, a, a, it is quite demanding. The folks and friends of Allah, awliya, have many ranks, uh, a pyramid-like pyramid hierarchy, the Qutb, the Paul, 
and the octave poles, and there is the قطب الفرد الغوص الجامع, the individual polo of comprehensive relief, and there is the غوص, the reliever, the helper, the rescuer, the supporter, whereby when something, there's a problem, people run to him and ask him to pray to Allah to release or to push away this problem. The imam and or the two leaders, the no, no gabe or the nobles, the abdel, the altered reciprocate swans, and the outed, the wedges and the pecks, and the nukabe, which are the captains. This is just a sample of this hierarchy, but it's beyond our teaching today. I just wanted to mention it briefly. Uh, now, hints. The folks and fans of Allah, they have many ranks and pyramid-like hierarchy, as I mentioned. Coming from this, I would like to share this with you. The awliya, at the same rank, kind of know each other and meet in the unseen realm. Even if they don't meet in the realm of mulk, in the realm of dunya, with their physical bodies, they meet in the realm of malakut and higher with the spirit and with their hearts. The higher-ranked awliya know the less ranked awliya. Like imagine this is like a kind of a, a building whereby the people in the upper floor can see the people in lower floors, but it's not the other way around. So the higher ranked awliya knows the less ranked awliya, but not the other way around. If a higher ranked wali wants to be revealed and known to another less ranked walis, he then descends to the lower realm, to this less ranked station, to make himself known to them so that they can know him. Now, returning back to Sidi Abu Hassan al-Shazuli and briefly speaking about his origins, he was born in Rumara, a small village in the countryside mountains of Morocco, close to Jabal al-Ilm, close to Sidi, Abu, Sidi Abdul Salam ibn Rashish, actually, geographically speaking, where his future master and guide lived. He did not find him until he had traveled so for some time to the east. In his journeys, he was seeking for the pole of the time. He was always asking about it. There he studied in Baghdad, because then Baghdad was so famous for scholars and Sufis. With Sheikh, very well-known Sheikh, his name is Abu al-Fatih al-Wasiti, a student of Sidi Ahmed al-Rafai, who was one of the Qutbs of his time. Now, Sidi Ahmed al-Rafai is the founder of Rafai Tariqat, very famous till now. And he is a Qutb of his time. Sidi Abu Fatih al Wasiti is one of his special students. Now, questions. Why did Sidi Abu Hassan al Shazuli want to meet the poor? This is important because the Sufi path starts with a teacher. Start with letting go of the nafs and delegating somebody trustful to lead our walking. And But why the poor? Was he a sincere and willful murid. Well, if he so, then this requires a test of sincerity. And this test of sincerity manifested in the form of an immigration for Allah or an immigration to Allah. Al Hijrah il Allah. To leave everything behind him and walk to Allah. Now, this is a siyaha, tourism, physical movement. He is a stranger now. And this is done with two intentions. The intention of feeling, okay, the first thing is to seek knowledge, seek science, but that's not merely it. Oh, the second is about complete reliance on Allah, because when we are when we are stranger in a foreign land, who, who, who are we going to ask other than Allah? We will ask Allah first for everything, and then we will take means, secondary causes, if it is permissible. But if we are staying in our own premises, we are falsely relying on these secondary causes. So to move out of our home, our country, and to find Allah, and to, with the intention to get closer to Allah, it's in form of full reliance, alhamdulillah. A reliance, a journey of reliance based on guidance, guidance, because he cannot have this um, strong will, strong intention, except there is this kind of guidance behind it to make him feel that he's doing the right thing. Now, is it a call to fulfill a destiny? 
or a spiritual ego-based adventure, because can be both. Now, this requires further tests other than immigration to Allah, and this will be demonstrated. It will be, it will be demonstrated to all of us that it was his destiny, not up to his spiritual ego, not because he wanted to be a wali of Allah, not because he wanted to be the whole of his time. No, no. These are all uh, not, not pure intention, if I may say. Pure intention is just to be nothing except his nothingness. He was meant to be an inheritor of Sidi Abdul Salam ibn Bashish, and this required further uh, uh, preparation. Now, this journey was the first stage of this preparation. The journey from west to east was to prepare Sidi Abu Hassan al Shazuri to be a student of Sidi Abdul Salam ibn Bashish. If he just met him when he was in Morocco, he wasn't ready at all. And this is the mercy of Allah. It is like going to school before reaching university. He met many walis and scholars. Now this is in his walking, of course. Uh, he learned from some of them knowledge, uh, uh, zikr, any, anything that gets him more, more purified, more beautified, more knowledgeable. Then after a while he asked them, are you the Qutb of the time? Now, these sheikhs, these walis, these friends of Allah, know exactly who they are, but and also know that they are not the Qutb of his time. So they say, no, I'm not the Qutb of my time. And if not, he would ask them, who is he and where to find him? Now, sometimes this, is, this can be challenging. They, they don't know the answer. Or they are not allowed to tell him the answer yet. The journey must have contained lots of gathered information. Okay. Uh, acquired knowledge and skills. These are all being given to him uh, and acts of worship, acts of getting closer, acts of zikr, inner walking, purification, beautification, and mainly adah. This is all forms of preparation. Now, after a few months, this is a surprise. After a few months, Abu Hassan al-Sheikh, Sidi Abu al-Fatih al-Wasiti, then told him, you have come here seeking for the poor Qutb of Islam, but you have left him in, in Maghrib, in, the Mor in Morocco. When Abu Hassan asked him, where will I find him and in which part of the Maghrib, in which part of Morocco? He was told, you will find him there where you see a light which rises from the direction of the west, and this will be the pole of Islam. If you follow that light, you will reach your goal. Now, he, this is so, so important. This is similar to what happened to Sayyidina Musa, Prophet Musa, peace be upon him, when he saw the holy fire as a sign, when he was walking in the desert with his family, he said, Inni anastunaran, I saw a fire, it's a sign, I'm going to go there, maybe I find guidance, maybe I find something there to benefit us. Sidi Abu Hassan al Shazuri was ready then to meet the Qutb of his time after this journey of preparation. This, this reminds me of the quote when the student is ready, the master appears. The master is always there. But am I ready enough to meet him in person? Am I ready enough to meet him in any real? Maybe yes, maybe no. Allah knows. When Sidi Abu al Fatih al Wasit realized that Sidi Abu al Hassan al Shazuri is ready to meet the Qutb of the time, he, by the order of Allah, not by his nafs, revealed the secret. Who is the Qutb and where to find him? Although they may have met in the physical worldly realm, I'm here talking about Sidi Abu al-Fatih al-Wasiti and Sidi Abdul Salam ibn Bashish. One of them is in east in, in, in Baghdad and the other is in west in Morocco. Maybe they haven't met in the physical worldly realm, but surely they met con countlessly in the unseen realms. Otherwise, he wouldn't have known him. And subhanAllah, this is a sign of a high rank of Sidi Abu al-Fatih al-Wasiti. How would he know the name and location of the Qutb of the time otherwise? He must be not annually, he must be one of the highly ranked awliya. But still, he knew beforehand that he is not the teacher of Sidi Abu al-Hassan al-Shazuri. Although it is worth mentioning that the true, genuine and complete Sufi teacher. Now, be careful, brothers and sisters, genuine and complete. He might, there is wali who is genuine, but not all walis are complete in a form of guidance and qutbaniyya. This 
genuine and complete Sufi teachers know their students by heart. And if a student who is not there reach out to them for guidance, they will help him or they will help her. Then eventually they will direct them towards their pre-assigned teacher to tell them, I'm not your teacher. Please find other guide, this person who's he he is entitled to teach you or he's commanded to teach you or your file is in his is on his desk this is the translation in from Arabic the file of the student is on the desk of the teacher so you go there and try to find him and, and learn from him uh, Sidi Abul Hassan returned to his own country of Maghrib and found the light of the holy mountain of Jabal al Alam as he had been told now, I think he saw this with his heart's eyes. Because if this light was so obvious to everybody, then Sidi Abdul Salam al Nagashis then wouldn't have been a so hidden uh, friend of Allah. So actually, these lights, in, in my opinion, are from the unseen realm. He saw it with his soul's eyes. He saw it with his heart's eyes. He set out on the steep ascent to the top of the mountain, having first washed himself and made ablution, wudu, at a spring of the foot of the mountain known to this day as Ayn al-Shazili. Ayn is the spring, Shazuli is Sidi Abul Hasan. And this is the photo of it. This is also another close-up photo of it. And this is the walk that he walked from this spring, water spring, where he did washing, to go to the top of the mountain to meet Sidi Abdul Salam ibn Rashish. Now, why did he do this? Why did he do washing and wudu before going there? Now, reflections upon the uh, adab, the politeness of meeting a friend of Allah, a wali of Allah. Uh, their hearts are full of the love of Allah. Their senses and qualities are not normal. They are replaced from the personal human attributes to more lights and special attributes, special qualities. They become to a big extent beings of love, mercy, and light in a physical form. Their hearts are sacred and holy like the mosque, like a, the niche in the mosque. And they are in continuous remembrance of Allah, even if they don't show it inside, always, always having a remembering, a heart full of remembrance. So, what do we do when we go to pray? What do we do when we go to a holy place? Since we wash and meet wudu before entering the mosque to pray, so it's out of adab that we ought to do the same when meeting a friend of Allah, knowing that he's a friend of Allah. Also, my advice to you, be aware of the intentions and thoughts. They have patterns. They are creatures of forms emanating from you and dwelling around you in the unseen world in your energy field. Uh, well, actually, yeah, we don't see them in the realm of Mulk, but the friends of Allah see them in the realm of Malakul. For them, they are seen and heard. They are not secrets anymore. So beware of what you have in your heart and what you have in your mind. Uh, they are perceived by the friends of Allah. And sometimes it is helpful if you have something like this, negative, you do stars. And if it's consistent, seek their help and guidance and tell them, CD, I have this constant thought that's really chasing me. It's, what do I do about it? And they will help, inshallah. They will give you guidance. Uh, Abul Hassan al when he reached the top of the mountain, he found the Sheikh reciting from the Quran Karim with one of his sons. Now, the first sign that Allah wants, wanted Sidi Abul Hassan to see, this is actually the second sign. The first sign was the light of the mountain. Second sign. As they recited together, Sidi Abdul Salam and his son, the holy words of Quran, Abul Hassan al saw so that their bodies begin to sway from side to side. But in truth, it was not their bodies which were moving. Thus, but the whole mountain which was swaying from side to side in accompaniment with their recitation. And this is a form of inheritance from the gifts that Allah gave to Prophet Dawood, peace be upon him. From this sign, he knew that this was the, truly the God of whom he was searching. Now in Surah Saba, 
verse number 10. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد آتينا داود منا فضلا يا جبال أودي معه والطير وألنا له الحديد صدق الله العظيم The translation And indeed we bestowed grace on David from us saying O you mountains glorify Allah with him and you birds also and we made the iron soft for him So Allah gives his gift beforehand to Prophet Dawood peace be upon him that the swaying of mountains is a form of remembrance, form of harmony to what's ever been recited by this holy uh, man. Reflections about something concerning miracles. Okay. The miracles are performed through, through, for, or by the prophets and messengers of Allah. Miracles are not performed by the friends of Allah. No, miracles are only performed through messengers of Allah. And they are mostly controllable. They are in their hands. Why? Because uh, Allah wanted to show humanity that this messenger is, uh, that is coming to talk to them, that this messenger is a messenger of Allah and he's a special human being chosen by Allah. So he gave him these gifts, he gave him these miracles to perform whenever needed. And they are mostly controllable. Whereas acts of kindness what we call in arabic karamat are acts of kindness are performed through and for the pious ones the friends of allah by allah but mostly uncontrollable they don't they cannot control it upon their own will mostly okay and this is a form of partial inheritance of the stations from the prophet to a wali like each wali is actually inheriting the lights secrets knowledge of one of the 124,000 prophets, including the 3,013, 3,014 messengers. Hence, there is a resemblance between them both. But out of adab, out of politeness, we should never ask what, a sign. We should never ask for one sign. Just witness it happen. Keep it in our heart and ask Allah to show us a sign to make our heart satisfy that this is our teacher or satisfy that this is a friend of his. And it will happen, inshallah, in the right time. Another sign given to Sidi Abu Hassan al Shazuli. He went forward in reverence and awe to meet his master who welcomed him and then greeted him with the words, Have you made ablution? Wudu. When Abu Hassan answered him, saying, Yes, he was told, You cannot come to us in a state of impurity. Return and make wudu. So Abu Hassan returned to the bottom of the mountain. He made his ablution and climbed again to the top. Having reached the presence of the sheikh, asked him if he would accept him as a student. Now, the reflection of the last part, to be obedient, very obedient and very humble. Even if you don't understand the reasons and wisdom behind an instruction given by the sheikh, we ought to follow it without questioning or objecting if it doesn't contradict with Allah's commands and rulings. Okay? Because there is a secret behind it. There is some puzzle to be resolved. And when we are dazzled or puzzled, contemplate on the question or contemplate on the instruction and behavior and actions of this friend of Allah. If you don't understand, seek Allah's guidance to show you what's the wisdom, what's the message for this, what's the message in this uh, instruction or in this behavior to me? What am I supposed to learn? And Allah, inshallah, with your pure heart and pure intention will guide you. Sidi Abul Hassan al-Shazli followed the command. Although he was he already was washed, he, he turned back, went down from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain to the spring and did wudu again. And then climbed up the mountain for a second time. The sheikh saw him and told him, I told you to return when you had purified yourself with ablution. Now, once again, Abu Hassan returned to the bottom of the mountain with a question for his rejection, turning in his heart until he was shown what was necessary for him to do. Because he came to realize the meaning of this initial trial and test and the depths of the purification which was necessary for him to make before he could enter in the path of Allah with the Holy Sheikh. Ah. Now, there are some ego boosters, even in a spiritual path, that make a human being 
cloud, being cloud, self-admirer, self-conceited, self-righteous, self self-referenced, self-empowered, and even may lead to arrogance, like shaitan or azubillah. How did this happen in a spiritual path? Ah, it can happen by gathered science, reading books, with, with not with the intention to get closer to Allah, but the intention to get not more knowledge, to, 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 to feel special, and to do some special acts of worshipping, and to do some even good deeds, and be proud that I did all these good deeds. This is catastrophic, because this is like seeing the self totally or partially in what's been in the goodness that's been done. And this is very dangerous. This is internal uh, internal shirk that contradicts with sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty. So seeing the self totally or partially rather than seeing only Allah worthy of praise and gratitude can be very dangerous and can cause to these ego boosters. And this destroys sincerity. Hence, the benefits, the lights, and blessings of all this knowledge and actions are gone in vain because they are not done for Allah's sake. They are done for ego's sake. Now, the remedies for this, number one, realization. To realize that if if I fall in this trap or not, am I, am I proud of myself that I'm doing this prayer or doing this sick, or am I being humble and modest and showing gratitude to Allah that I'm being used, I'm being utilized, to recite his holy name. This is very, very big, big honor that Allah gave me. Not because I deserve it. No, no. This is because he's generous. He's compassionate. He's merciful. He's all-giving. He's kind. After this realization, we do tawbah. Tawbah, tawbah, tawbah all the time. Because there might be bits and pieces that require tawbah always. And then letting go. Letting go of this knowledge. Letting go of these deeds. Letting go of whatever has been, you know, that we feel happy about. And then we be, we go underneath the commands and the instruction of a complete guide. Obedience, obedience. Because sometimes even, I witnessed this, a guide would see somebody so happy doing a remembrance. And then you would tell him, no, no, leave this remembrance, do this prayer. And the student must be obedient because actually it is a remedy. He wants him to let go of whatever he's so attached to to find Allah's lights in another thing that would give him even more lights because then his ego is not present. Uh, Sidi Abul Hassan al-Shazuli this time has made his evolution. He emptied himself of everything that he knew or thought he knew. Because sometimes we think by mistakes that we know something, but we don't know it for sure. Everything that he had learned and taken in from other teachers, because actually, although it may be right, but it contradicts with the school of Sidi Abdul Salam ibn Bashish. So why would I join a new school if I'm if I'm holding to the teachings of previous schools? I should let go. He destroyed all his attributes, his personal attributes, pictures, and prejudices. This is a form. Always, I keep remembering the sayings that I learned from this wonderful school. Healing is the walking, the, whole, the healing is the walking, and the walking is the heat. So this is a form, of course, of deep healing and deep walking. Until he knew that he was left with only a vast space of nothingness inside him, which was waiting to be filled. He was now totally surrendered to whatever his master, whom he desired with all his being, would send him. Now, when this happened, when he became just a blank white page, an empty cup, he climbed once more to the top of the mountain. But before he reached its summit, he was met by the master in uniform. Hmm, this is important. In uniform, like Sidi, Abul, Sidi Abdul Salam Rashish was wearing special form of clothing. This is a secret whereby this form of clothing, maybe he... he he was given the khutbaniya when he was wearing this form of clothing. It was a marqa, which is a form of uh, coat, but because it is used a lot, it got lots of uh, holes in it and then sewed uh, or patched, a patched, a patched coat and a hay, a hay, uh, hay, a hay cover head like the one I'm wearing, but the one I'm wearing is from cotton, but this one, uh, Sidi Abdul Salam was wearing one from uh, hey, and this is his the court uniform. 
who greeted him by pronouncing his full line of descendant back to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Sheikh now embraced him with the deep love of acceptance. He could find no words with which to return the greeting, but the master said to him, now he was in awe. Sidi Abul Hassan stayed in awe for some time till he became full of uh, uh, lights and his heart opened up vastly. He, his basira, his inner vision opened up so vastly after what happened. And Sidi Abdul Salam told him, if you wish to fetch water, you take an empty bucket to the well to do so. A full bucket has no room for water. With these words, he took his beloved student by the hand and filled him to overflowing with the holy water. The reflections from this part is فَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ There is always somebody who knows more than anybody. Always, always. So it's infinite. The knowledge of Allah is infinite. And again, signs. Refrain from asking the wali or the guide to show you a sign. Because this is an ego talk. Instead, accept it with gratitude and oh, when it happens. Signs are not meant for validating the wali. Be careful. Be careful, sisters and brothers. Because he's already validated. He doesn't he doesn't need any validation from us. But signs actually are there to assure us and increase our faith and belief that he is a wali of Allah and that we are his beloved students. So it's like it's a gift from us. And we always need to empty our cup first, even after joining the school. So I don't go to the teacher and guide and I'm proud of the things that I've done or the number of remembrance I've done. I should always return empty because it's all it's all gifts from Allah. Afterwards, yeah, Hassan said, said, Allah, I have washed myself to my knowledge and my actions so that I do not recognize an, any knowledge or action except that comes to me by the hand of this sheikh. Very specific. You know, compass to the north. The knowledge of this ablution had became, has become the habitual practice or sunnah for all those of this holy past who have followed after him, because it is the only way to reach the knowledge of the reality and the light from that meeting continues to pour out without ceasing to both the East and the West. Now, another reflection about this part, which is more appropriate? To say this to the friend of Allah, I want, I intend, I wish, I love to be your student, or better to say, may I follow you? And the answer, Allah is teaching us the answer in his holy book, the Quran in Surah Al-Kahf, the, the, the cave, chapter of cave, and verse 66. قَالَ لَهُ مُوسَى هَلْ أَتَّبِعُكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُعَلِّمَنِي مِمَّا عُلِّمْتَ وَشْدَىٰ Musa, Musa or Moses, Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, said to Khidr, who then was a, a, also People say he was a messenger, others say that he was, that he was a hidden messenger uh, to only minority of people. Some say that he's a friend of Allah, some say he was a Qud. May I follow you so that you teach me something of that knowledge, guidance, and to pass, which you have been taught of sound judgment by Allah. May I follow you. This is very, very important. I'm asking permission to follow. I don't say I want to follow. I love to follow because I is coming again from the ego. So I I choose to let go of the I. So instead I would I would say, may I follow? I put it in a form of question. Because he may say yes. And this is fine. Now this is a blessing and maybe it's a trial. And he may say no. If he says no, that doesn't mean He's, he's bad or, or, or he's not a good enough teacher. No, no, no. On the other way, in this case, I should see what's missing is inside me. What am I missing? What, I, what do I need to purify? What do I need to beautify to be able to become his student and follower and work on myself with honesty? Or otherwise, maybe my teacher is not the same wali. Maybe my teacher is somebody else. Allah knows. So both ways, I should accept them with satisfaction, with rida. Uh, yeah. 
So, alhamdulillah, these are the references that I built this teaching from Children of the Tools by Sidi Muhammad Said Al Jamal. This part is contained on this website, sufimaster.org backslash teachings backslash mashis htm. And textbooks, Al Sheikh Al Mullah Al Mawla Abdul Salam Ibn Bashish by uh, Muhammad Abidu in Arabic. And uh, some of the sayings taken from the subtle blessings of the saintly lives of Abu Abbas al Musi, Kitab Lata'if al Minan in English by Sidi ibn Ata'illah al Secondary. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam. I will end with a short version of the Wazifa. Uh, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على من منهم شقة الأسرار وانفلقت الأنوار وفيه التقة الحقائق وتنزلت علوم آدم فأعجزت الخلائق وله تضائلة الفهوم فلم يدرك منا سابق ولا لاحق فرياض الملكوت بزاه جماله منقة وحياض الجبروت بالقيد أنواره متدفقة ولا شيء إلا وهو به مموت إذ لولا الواسطة لذهب كما قيل المصوط صلاة طليق بك منك إليك إليه كما هو أهله اللهم إنه سرك الجامع الدال عليك وحجابك الأعظم القائم لك بين يديك اللهم الحقني بنسبه وحققني بحسبه وعرفني إياه معرفة أسلم بها من موارد الجهل وأكرع بها من موارد الفضل واحملني على سبيله إلى حضرتك حملا محفوفا بنصاتك وانصرني بك لك وعيدني بك لك وأجمع بيني وبك وحل بيني وانصرني بك لك وعيدني بك لك وأجمع بيني وبينك وحل بيني وبين غيرك وانصرني بك لك وأيدني بك لك وأجمع بيني وبينك وحل بيني وبين غيرك الله 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 إن الذي فرض عليك القرآن لرادك إلى معاد سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Alhamdulillah. Now this short version of Wazifa uh, and other short sayings that were mentioned in the writings of Sidi Abu Hassan al uh, are the teachings that's been delivered to us from Sidi Abdul Salam al Rashish. May Allah be pleased with him always. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for listening and if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to help answer them. That was a stunning teaching, Walid. That was simply exquisite. Um, <laughs> we have time for uh, one or two questions if anybody would like to raise their hand and ask. I think the our beloveds are sitting in the beauty of the teaching, uh, Lalit. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do this. Let's uh, bring the recording to a close. And uh, thank you so much for this. I'm certain that everyone who's experienced it uh, tonight has received great blessings from it. And inshallah, those that watch the recording in the future will uh, will gather even uh, even more so. I mean, I mean, alhamdulillah, thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity. May Allah utilize us the best way he, that pleases him. I mean. Inshallah.